Hello and welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast. This is Single Track Session, episode 139, and I am your host, Eric Manning, and I'm back. It has been a while. It's been so long, I almost, almost forgot how to hook up the equipment. But not quite. It hasn't been quite that long. But uh, but yeah, so this is going to be uh, June 27th launch, Thursday. And quite a bit to cover because there is a big race happening this weekend um, for those in the trail running world. Um, if you uh, if you know, there's a big one. There's a few good races, but there's kind of the, one of the the granddaddies, if you will. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But first, let's cover the important parts. Let's talk about this week's beer of the week. <clears throat> and there's a good story behind this beer. Um, as many of you know, I coach a, a soccer team, and luckily for me, one of the parents on the team um, also enjoys good beer. And not just good beer, but good IPAs. So we were training the other day, and he came walking over, and he says, here, I got something for you. Well, that's always a good sign, right? But then he started reaching in his pocket, and I was like, oh, he's going to do something. But it was just a beer. It is the Melvin Cloudy 5000 Hazy Double IPA. I've been trying. I've been wanting to try this one. Um, many of you know that Melvin's one of my my favorite breweries. On top of Mother Earth, right now, those two kill it. Um, but this is a good beer. It's uh, it's a ha- it's a hazy one, and it does it. You know, you pour it. You know, I pour it into a pint glass because I'm classy like that. Um, and it's good. It's got some, uh, you know, obviously some hop. It's more of a New England IPA, Imperial at eight point two percent. Um. Some notes of some uh, piney, some citrus, um, and he, funny for me, I'm not a huge onion guy, but I swear I could smell onion in this thing. Now, I'm having it right now, and it's it's good. This is a this is one that uh, for me would be kind of that borderline of a celebratory beer. One you save for a special occasion, you know, at 8.2%, the flavor of it. It's not one I'm going to sit down and have for. Right, it's a little heavier, um, but it is a good drinking beer. It's a really good podcast beer of the week. So if you get a chance, gotta tip my hat. Melvin's seems to come out with some good ones. Um, really good beer. It's got the hoppy notes to it, but it is more of a New England style IPA. Um, good flavor. Um, yeah, it's kind of citrusy. Can feel some like pineapple ish, but not strong, not overpowering. It's not like it's a fruity one. Um, good head on the beer. Good bubble. Um, but a good beer. So thank you, Shane. Shout out to you, my man, my IPA connoisseur, um, for hooking me up with this one. And uh, looking forward to the next beer of the week. But uh, good job, Melvin. If you get a chance, tie this one on. It is, you know, if you're in the area up in uh, in Wyoming, the Afton area, it's at Tie Me Up, Melvin's Brewing Company. Um, and there's Melvin's Brewing Company. I was in Washington. They're moving around a little bit. But give it a shot. It's a good one. Moving on. Well, um, as many of you know, I've not just been not podcasting lately. It's been a dark time here. Um, haven't been able to run. Been doing some PT. I think I have one more session. Um, been doing some dry needling. Not uh, Okay, dry needling for me on this works, but I'm not a fan. Simply because I'm afraid of needles. I will say that loud and proud, um, but it works. Um, the last step we did was we hooked up some uh, electricity to the needles, and that was trippy. Um, felt like Frankenstein a little bit, but uh, it's coming along. Um, I'm feeling more comfortable. I've seen so many Achilles injuries, I swear, in the last two months, whether it's watching the NBA finals, whether it's posts on social media, and we'll get to that in a minute too probably, if I don't forget, um, but just so many more Achilles injuries, so I'm more nervous, and I'm kind of more on alert. And so I, I, I haven't dared, I guess, push it a little bit. So, um, and even a friend, you know, a friend of mine, a friend of the show, we've had him on, Jim Skaggs, who's has some Achilles issues. He's been dealing with, with some stuff. Um, and he, you know, he's got a, a small, I think, tear in one of his. So, yeah, not a good situation. But coming along, so I'm a little more anxious, I guess, to get out. Um, but yeah, so the Achilles injury is doing well. It's been a while. I understand 
I'm behind the times. I'm not going to go over the history of the last month of trail running, but I wouldn't be a good podcaster or even a, a average, below average podcaster. If I didn't mention the Hard Rock 100 has been canceled. I know you probably didn't see it on social media because it you know didn't make its rounds, but it has been canceled this year, which is heartbreaking for me. I went ahead and canceled my reservations down there. I will not be heading down to Silverton. I know a lot of people are still going down to do some cool things. Um, but with my schedule, I, I had to opt for something different this year. Um, but, you know, tough decision, good decision. We'll see what happens next year, right? Um, and I know that happened with a few races, but I think more importantly, you know, I, 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 f- I kind of feel for the community a little bit because it's such a big weekend or month, realistically, um, for the community and now not having that, that uh, income coming in and, and you know, that it, it it's going to sting so if you have an opportunity to go down there this summer to to get around hang out please do so such a great community always welcome to hard rock with open arms um help them through the summer kind of keep that, that that thing going but uh good decision other otherwise and i never thought i would be happy to say this i'm officially not a homeowner folks those of you that have followed my saga know that uh, I've been trying to sell my house, and it's done. I, it's funded. It's gone. I am officially not a homeowner for the first time in a long time. So that's a huge relief from me. That is such a life thing. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And now I'm going to celebrate because my birthday is coming up July 9th. If anybody wants to know, I wear a large shirt. Um, my shoe size is about 11 and a half. I like cheese curds. I like IPAs. But I think I'm going to do something for myself, which I've never really done on my birthday. I'm not a huge birthday guy. I think you've got those those milestone birthdays. 16, I'm going to sell 18 in there, kind of. 21, obviously. Um, and then I think really after 21 for me, the next one's 50. I don't think there's anything between 21 and 50, right? 30, 40, and nah, I'm not buying it. So 21 to 50, so I'm not to 50 yet. I don't need to tell my age. You can look that up online somewhere. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff. Um, but I think I'm going to get a car. I have decided that I'm going to spoil myself, get something I want, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, it's limited. I've been researching, studying, and I think it's going to boil down to a Subaru Outback or a Toyota RAV4. Those two... I'm going to test drive both of them, hopefully this weekend. There's a smoking good deal at the Subaru dealership this weekend, so I'm going to check that out. But that's going to be my birthday present to myself. And I might throw in another IPA just just to celebrate a little bit because I cracked a few open the other night when my house funded because that was pretty monumental. But I know everybody's excited to hear my house is sold, and I didn't want to leave you out of the loop. Um, I was also sick for two weeks. That's part of the other thing. Um, that summer cold has still got to be one of the worst to me. I don't get sick often, but when I do, it, it absolutely ravishes this body. It killed me. Um, I was down for a while, and I hate being sick. And uh, so I'm coming through that. My voice is still not back. I got a little cough going on. Hopefully I don't cough during the podcast because I'm not going to edit it out. I don't have time for that today. Uh, but, yeah, so that's the other thing that's been going on. Um, also want to give a huge shout-out, huge, huge, huge shout-out to friends from Idaho, Paige and Eric, who wed just this past week um, on the trails with some friends. Um, such a cool, cool union. Um, two amazing people. Um, saw some pictures online. So I just want to say congratulations to Paige and Eric. Um, so, so cool. Next up, uh, I've got a want ad, travel buddy needed. Um, I need a travel buddy. I want to travel. I don't mind traveling solo, which I've never really done. I don't have a problem with it, but I think sometimes it's fun when you have somebody else. Not just to maybe split a cost or two here and there, right? But just to kind of explore with, right? Hey, did you see that? Hey, blah, 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 whatever, right? So travel buddy wanted. You like to travel? Maybe uh, some cool locations, Iceland, Ireland, some of those lands, Um I need to travel, folks. I really need to get some good deals on travel. And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Travel. Yeah, so I need to travel. What else we got up? Um, One of our listeners, one of my favorite listeners. Yes, I said that. Favorite listeners, uh, Amy from Vermont, has sent me a link. um, And I know that's been making rounds. I think it came out this week, just a few days ago. You don't have to run ultras. Run whatever distance you want. The distance does not determine the value. An awesome little article. 
Um, I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes. David Ruck put it up there. Roche uh, partners with Trail Running Magazine. Just he's a good coach. Uh, kind of running speaks for itself. The person I'm sure you've heard who he is, but it just talks a little bit about you know trail running. You know, don't get caught up. And and here's the other thing. And I'm going to backtrack. And I apologize, but the social media aspect. I've really backed off that this last month on purpose. I did a few posts. Took my daughter to concerts. Um, but not much for trail manners, just the, the, the regulars, right? Um, but I've kind of backed off all, like Instagram. I don't know the last time I did a trail manners Instagram. And, you know, when you're doing a business of any sort, which this kind of is, it's what you're supposed to do because someone told me the other week, you're not really relevant on Instagram anymore. Like, I don't really care, right? What's relevant anyway, right? I'm, I'm hopefully I'm relevant where I need to be, like in my daughter's life and my dog Gunner. And, uh, anyway, so, I backed off social media, so I've been missing some stuff. But this is a good little article. I'm going to post it, and I'm, I want to thank Amy for sharing it. Um, because of popularity, you know, there's a fear of missing out we talk about all the time. But there's some some things to think about, um, about being okay, whatever distance you run, right? Because some people, you know, if they know you run hundreds, fifties, long, longer stuff, they'll come up, oh, I only ran a 5K. Oh, I only ran a half marathon. Or even, oh, I only ran a marathon. Or even at the 50 mile, we've all been... You know, been to a race and there's like different distances. You run the shorter one. Oh, I'm only doing that one. It doesn't matter, folks, right? I haven't run in months, literally. I, I miss it and I'll, I will be back, obviously. But it took me a little while to understand that running is not who I am in my life. Yes, I do a trail running podcast, but everybody's different, right? Everybody's out there for different reasons. Health, um, you know, to get away from things, to solve things, to train hard for a race, whatever it is. Everybody has their own thing. And I think so much when you look at social media, it's it's almost com- – everybody does, right? I mean, you don't want to think you do, and I hope I hope we don't, but we do. We compare ourselves, whether it's our run, whether it's where we ran, whether it's the car we drive, right, the house we own, whatever it is. We kind of compare things. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. But this little article by David's awesome. Um, a couple of the points he picks out is different strokes for different folks, kind of what we talked about. There's different reasons we run and why. Don't compare yourself. Um the next one up is uh, um, your your body makeup varies a ton, right? Everybody does, whether it's bone density, it talks about muscles, VO2 max, all those things. So there's some things you can't control no matter how hard you train. Um, longer isn't always better. Um, and then, again, behind it talks about a little bit behind the scenes of social media. Um, it's... I, I, I think social media... People are negative with, like, oh, social media, this... I don't have a problem with social media if it's taken the right way. And, and as a human, you can cipher what you see and how it affects you. And I think that's where it struggles, right? Um, I think it can be a very powerful thing for people, for businesses, for clubs, for groups, for whatever. But it, it can bring that negative connotation that makes you... I don't know, question things, and that's not good either. So I think there's a place for it, and I think the the thing is it's really up to us to draw that line, um, whether it's unfriending people, unfollowing things, you know, that, that kind of make you feel a certain way, um, getting off of it for a while at times, whatever it is. So, But it's such a good article. Um, I want to thank Amy for sending this over because I did see the, 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 the headline of it, but I didn't open it. You know, so I wouldn't have read it otherwise. And that's why I like the Trail Manners listeners so much is they keep me in the loop, right? It's like she's like, this is a great article. Um, more went into that we won't get into, but I read it. I'm like, oh, I'm glad that she sent it or I probably wouldn't have read it. So if you have stuff like that, feel free to send them over, right? I mean, I enjoy it pers- on a personal level, but, you know, if I decide to podcast again, wink, wink, um, I can share it. And I think that's good. You know, we're sharing with the community. So thank you for sending that over. Okay, next one up. We uh, It's been a while, so many of you may not even remember. But I remember because it's the podcast and I have notes and sticky notes. Very marginal memory. But we talked about it, the Mount Rushmore of ultra running. So I asked people, hey, what is your Mount Rushmore of ultra running? And then little specifics behind it. So here's the interesting part. A lot of people wonder why it's those four presidents on there. Um, right. Well, at the time, um, when Mount Rushmore, there's only 28 presidents to choose from. It was started in Octo- October 4th, 1927, and it was completed on Halloween of 1941. So it took a long time, but 
it wasn't like, you know, now we have X amount of presidents, right? Back then when the pickings came, when he needed four, there were 28, and I did the count, I think, 28 to choose from. So out of the 28 presidents, they that's the four they picked for different reasons. So when, when you talk about the the uh, Mount Rushmore of ultra running, there's just so many more to choose from because ultra running has been going on for quite a long time, right? And there's just more people in it. So I was really interested to see a lot of the names that popped up for people's Mount Rushmore of ultra running. I talked about, you know, there should be more than four, right? It's just there's more there's more runners than there were presidents. And I wasn't really surprised by the amount of people that commented and the names they commented. I don't think there's one name on the list that was brought to me or, or sent over that I was like, oh, really? That's... I get it, right? And I think there's, I don't know, I'm looking at my little list here. I think there's over 20 people are right in there that people said, this would be on my Mount Rushmore ultra running. And then people said, well, who's on yours? I mentioned it, I think, in the last podcast. And I think there should be more. Um, I, I know mine, you know, for personal reasons and other things, I had Chrissy Mel, Scott Jaime, Ian Torrance, Rock Horton. Um, and, but then you look at some of the names that people brought in, and some more, you know, like Killian now, right? <clears throat> there's some names that people right now are high on and i get why um no all these names could easily be one of them was you know some of them okay let's say like courtney dewalter jim wamsley um you know to name anna frost well maybe not even anna but there's a few that just i don't want to say i've been in it as long when you're looking at names like ann trayson carl Meltzer, scott jurek hal corners nikki kimball's David Horton, Billy Simpsons, Tim Tweet Myers. These are just some names, right? Matt Carpenter, Max King. So going through that list, I think it's it's a personal thing, right? Like who you are drawn to and why on the Mount Rushmore. But mine, I'm going to stay with Chrissy, Jaime, Ian, and Rock. But if we added more, I think my next layer would have an Ann Trayson. Um, probably a Gordy, to be honest with you. I mean, he was... Legend has it, right? Kind of the the, the man. Um, and there's, again, multiple stories of everything. Uh, Tim Tweetmeyer could be one. You know, and everybody has these, you know, um, um, Giannis Curris is a name that came in there. David Horton. Um, who else is, I mean, obviously Killian, what he's doing now. But there's so many more up-and-coming ones, but they just haven't been in the game as long. So when you're ha- holding resumes to say, Look how fast this person run, and they've run Western Bud. Well, this person's had how many top 10 Western finishes? So I think some of it's longevity as well, because we've had some amazing runners come through, do some crazy things, and then they're gone, right? And there's nothing against that either, because people are in it for different reasons. But, you know, you look at what you would put on your Mount Rushmore of of ultra running, and I think that's kind of where it was. I mean... Because Courtney, right? I mean, what she's doing, I see her having some longevity for sure. And what she's done is super incredible. And I had one person, and I won't say names because they didn't ask me to. It was just a kind of an offside conversation on an email, you know, kind of talking about, well, how, and I, I, I always have this conversation with other sports. And baseball is going to be one of the primary ones because that's my history with my father and, and everything else. But with time and technology and all this other stuff that changes, like in trail running, you know, you say a Gordy, you know, where he's he might be carrying an old school canteen, beaver belt canteen or whatever. Now we've got all these hydration options. Now we've got <clears throat> gels, um, and those are improving. And we've got all the better shoes, better equipment, better um, statistics, better you know uh, training programs, better do's and don'ts, and all these things. So sometimes I go back to these. Um, pioneers of sports, whether it's trail running or whatever, and you, you almost wonder, would they be successful with all the amenities we have to us now or all, all the, the new technologies or like watches even, you know, tracking your heart rate, all these things, or would it matter? You know, did do you see them doing those things even if they're relevant? You know, like, like professional sports where they took a bus everywhere and now they've got flights and there's a massage person for every person and there's like yogas and dry needlings and 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 cupping and whatever you want to say but they didn't have necessarily all these things and again not to say that these things are always successful every person but i think when again going back to the trail running or ultra running side you know what did you know even matt carpenter right i mean some of the stuff he did was absolutely off the charts and you know it was a while ago to be honest with you 
um, Jurek, you know, Melt, even Carl. You know, I mean, he's still in the game and, and things have changed. But early on, what these guys were doing, and Trayson, another just amazing runner. I don't care, male, female. Um, there's just a lot more at our fingertips than there used to be. So I like some of that old school stuff. Not to say some of the newer people aren't. Like Wamsley's pretty minimalist, right? Um, I don't know. Interesting thought. Lots of good comments. Lots of good emails for your Mount Rushmore of ultra running. And uh, I think that could go a lot deeper, a lot more. But uh, I was more impressed with the fact it took 14 years to make Mount Rushmore. I didn't know that. So trail running taught me about American history. So thank you, trail running. All right. Let's move forward. Um, we're kind of wagging um, with that one. Let's go ahead and get into, let's see, what should we start with? Um, I've got a few things we want to cover. You know what? I'm not going to talk about race results lately. we got enough to talk about, and you already know what they are. And I've been out of the game for a while sitting here at home. Um, and guess what? I've got a soccer tournament this weekend. So I had tryouts. We've got a new team. We kept nine of my remaining players, picked up seven. So it's basically almost 50-50. Do the math. It's close enough. 60, 40, 55, 45, whatever. Um, but yeah, so we've got a new team, and we have a tournament this week, and for uh, two games on Thursday, two games on Friday. would be nice to play on Saturday, which would be the final, but again, not the, the, the goal, I guess, with this team. We're just trying to get to play together. But I'm really excited. Super I love coaching. Oh, my gosh. It's such a... It sucks during tryouts. It's the worst thing in the world when you have to make those picks. Um, it's the worst. And we had, for my team, we kept 16. And we had like 60 people at tryouts, roughly, for my age group. So kept 16 out of 60. We ended up making two other teams for my age group to keep some. But that's the bummer part. But now it's the interesting part. So we got some summer tournaments this summer. Going to San Francisco at the end of August, first part of September. Um, but it's got a good little team. So I'm excited to, to report back on how our tournament went, just on how we played. If we get good results, um, score-wise, fantastic. But uh, we picked up some quality players. So I'm really looking forward to that. And we're going to bounce. We're going to segue, if you watch this, how smooth it was. Eric coaches soccer. Women's World Cup soccer. So, again, those not interested, go ahead and give me, I don't know, a couple minutes is all I need. Um, to review what has happened, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be back. But we're down, folks. From the time this podcast launches, we're down to eight teams, eight countries. <clears throat> so we've got U.S., go USA, USA, uh, France, England, Norway, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, and Italy. Are there any surprises in the final eight to me? Um, no, there's not. Um, could there be, I think some of it had to do with the draw too. I think France, Brazil was an early tough draw for the women. Um, Canada, that broke my heart. Even though I like the Swedes, that kind of broke my heart in the quarters. Uh, Japan, I thought they deserved to win over Holland, um, as well. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think there's really any surprises down to the final eight. Um, some surprises through the tournament. I don't even know that really. Um, I think the women's side is a little more, it's not as, wide open um, necessarily as the men's side. But I think a lot of these uh, games that happen on the 27th, 28th, and 29th will determine. So let's start with uh, Italy and Holland. Um, they they play the winner of Germany-Sweden for the Final Four. Italy and Holland. I'm going to give you my pick on this. I'll be honest with you. I only saw a little bit of the Italian team, and I just mainly saw Holland when they played Japan, and I wasn't impressed. But... In this sport, getting the result is what it's about. So even though you may not look good, even the USA didn't look great against Spain. But even though you don't look good, it's about advancing. Finding a way to win, folks. Just like finding that 12th or 15th wind to get to the finish line, right? Just finding a way to get to the finish line. Um, so I'm going to edge this one. Even though and, and Italy beat China, I'm going to go with Holland. Just because I love the Dutch to begin with. And I love Orange. So that's going to play into it. So I'm going to go with Holland over Italy. That's going to be a 2-1 game. I think Holland's going to find a way to win. And then the next matchup, the winner of that plays the winner of Germany and Sweden. Um, i got to give that one to the Germans. Um, I'm a huge German fan on the men's side. 
And I think the women are, are very similar far as they're tough, right? And uh, they have a good style. They're pretty uh, tactically sound. So I'm going to give Germany the win over Sweden. That's going to be uh, 3-1 on that one. So it'll be Holland and Germany playing on July 3rd. So are we going to have another podcast before then? No. No, because July 3rd is a Wednesday. Okay, so i got to give the winner to that one. So the semifinal is going to be Holland and Germany. I'm going to give the Germans the win into the final. Holland will play in the consolation game. On the other side of the bracket is where it is naughty time. It's unfortunate, really. But we'll, go, we'll start with England-Norway. Um, so, late breaking news. England camp got hit with a stomach virus. I don't know how they're going to do pooping their pants in a game. So, I might give the edge to Norway just because they're healthy and England might have some issues. And it's hotter than stuff over there right now. And that, you know, when it's hot and your stomach has the, the poopy pants, that's not a good combination. So, I might have picked England. But knowing that they don't feel good and it's hot, I'm going to go Norway. I am going Norway. That game is going to be 3-2. I think there's going to be some goals in that game. Uh, so 3-2 for the Norwegians. And I'm going to get a sticky note while I'm talking to you. And I'm going to write these scores down just to see how close I came. So we're, what do we say? We said Holland um, is going to win 2-1. We said Germany was going to be 3-1. We said Norway is going to be 3-2. Or Yeah. And the next one is the granddaddy. This one could have easily been the final, in my opinion. I think these two are the two they've played the best, even though the last, the third game for the U.S. was not um, impressive. Um, the result over Spain, two PKs. But they just didn't play their style. I think Spain got it right um, tactically. Um, thumping Alex Morgan. I mean, they, they played physical with her all game long and I think that really disrupted her play I'm, I don't I don't think she's used to it and I don't think in the men's side the women's side doesn't matter you see that a lot as a tactic right physical with Messi physical with Ronaldo physical with whoever and I think it affected her you could see it early on she was complaining more she getting bumps and bruises and in the back of her mind she's thinking about it the rest of the game I'm gonna get hit I'm gonna get hit so I liked Spain's tactics um, USA they have probably uh, is it Lavelle? She's my new favorite player for the U.S. That, that She is money, dude. Watch her play. She delivers a ball on a dime. She's still pretty young. They have a great team, but watch Lavelle. I'm going to give USA the homer win here. I think France can absolutely pull the upset. If, if U.S. plays the way they did against Spain, France is going to beat them. France has some very dynamic players. I think France has been tested more. I don't think the U.S. has been tested yet enough to really get their their motor going that's why i think if the u.s wins this game they're going to win the whole thing this is kind of their 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 big test their big match because if they win this they play the winner of england norway which i think they can handle and then then on the other side most likely they'll play the germans which i still think would be a great final um but i'm gonna give usa the win and i think france is playing well i'm gonna go four three usa i know that seems a little weird um but I honestly still don't think the U.S. defense has been tested. When you get tested a little bit more um, with some quality players, um, I think that makes a huge difference. So those are my and in the and what did I say? So I got to go the next route, right? Uh, U.S. is going to be playing Norway, and I think U.S. hands Norway a loss. And then U.S. Germany in the final that'll be July seventh, and third place game July sixth. I'll I'll get back on those next week just because we don't even know who's going to be playing for sure, and I, I want to see how people are feeling. Any suspensions, any more bugs or viruses um, going through the camp. So that's my picks. If you've got other picks, hurry and send them over because uh, the games are going to be happening. By the time this launches, I think the England-Norway game will be happening or uh, uh, should be happening soon. It happens uh, Thursday. This launch this will launch a little later on Thursday, probably closer to 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and the World Cup Women's Game is 1 p.m. Mountain Time. But all the other ones, let me know your thoughts. I like thoughts. I'm not uh, always right. 
I'm not even going to play on that one, like even most of the time or anything else. I'm, I'm usually not right, actually. I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that. I'm usually wrong. But we got to get on because the next one I want to talk about, um, I'm looking at my favorites on my notes here. U.S. was my favorite. France, Germany, England. Oh, I had Japan. But they, like I said, they lost to Holland. My next tier was Holland, Sweden. I liked Australia. They let me down. They took a heartbreaking loss, though, um, and Brazil. So my second tier was good. My outside was, was Canada. That was my, I know those are my notes. Um, U.S. played Thailand. That was ugly. Sweden and Chile. So, all right. <clears throat> Let's get into what's happening next, folks. The big, the granddaddy, where people are going to be tied to their, their laptops, their cellular devices, their computers, everything. We've got the Western States 100 coming up, and it's going to be happening quick, quick, quick. Um, and there is some guns blazing, folks. Um, eight of last year's top ten men are returning. Okay, so that's 80%. See how I did that? 80%. And eight of last year's top ten women are returning, which is another solid 80% return rate. That's just the top 10. That doesn't count other runners that weren't in the top 10 last year. Okay. So let's start. I like starting with the ladies. I just did my head ladies first, right? Here we go. Here's my prediction. I know it's a stout field. I get it. I know it. Courtney DeWalter will finish 10th overall. I think she's going to crack the top 10, even with the strong, strong men's field. I really, really want that. We've talked about it on the podcast for years. She's coming back. Um, Caitlin Gerben's coming back. Lucy Bartholomew's coming back. Amanda Basham's coming back. Cecilia Flory's coming back. Camelia Mayfield's coming back. Eliza Lapierre's coming back. And Corinne Malcolm is coming back. Those are the top from last year. Okay, now why don't you throw in, um, I don't know, Claire Gallagher, Elisa St. Laurent, Casey Lichtig. Let's throw some of those names in. Camille Heron, might have heard of her. She's she's run a little bit. Yao Wang's in there. Um, and these are just a few. I know I'm probably missing a bunch, but those are just a few others. So not just is this going to be competitive for, for top 10 or top 3 men, top 3 females. It's going to be just absolutely competitive. Who has the day, right? We always talk about that. And there's going to be somebody that didn't get mentioned there and somebody that's not even probably on, if you ranked your top 20 women, there's going to be the 22nd women if you ranked them finishing top 10 women. It's, I think it's going to be just like that because it's all about running your race, all about the conditions, and I think this year it, they're going to push hard because on the women's side, obviously you have Courtney, who she goes out and she stays out. You got Camille, she's going to... She's going to turn or burn, right? Um, and then you've got the others, like Lucy Bartholomew last year. You know, her her debut, she finished in 1859, um, you know, which was still an hour and a half behind Courtney, right? Caitlin was an hour and 20, an hour and 10 minutes behind Courtney last year. Um, but you know people have been focusing on this race. So on the women's side, I'm super, not to say I'm not on the men's, don't get me wrong, fellas, but I'm excited on the women's side. I love the, the depth of field and what's the word I'm looking for? It's just a good mix. It's just a good mix of different types of runners, right? Mountain runners to, to flat runners to, you know, we got uh, Francesca Canepi from Canepa from Italy, you know, European mountain stuff. So there's going to be a really good mix, right? I think you're going to have, you can't, I don't think this is a day on the men or women's side where you can have an off day and finish top five, maybe even top ten at this point. There's just a solid field, and I think as as the times are, are churning here, people are just more prepared for stuff, right? And they've got their game plan. There's still sandbagging going on. That will never change. Um, but it's going to be interesting because on any given day, you know, Camille Herring could pull out a crazy result and a lot of these other women as well. So who are my top three, you're asking, right now as you're driving down the road or running and maybe hopping over a rattlesnake? Um, I'm going my top three, Courtney. I, I, you can't, she's she's hitting Killian territory in my book where you can't bet against her, right? It's like when Killian enters a race, 
If he's not your winner, you better have a good reason, right? And I think that's with Courtney. I think Courtney, to me, has earned that in my eyes, where if she's in a race, she, she I gravitate that she'll win it. Now, am I going to be wrong? You know it, right? But I think it's a safe bet for me, and I think... Yeah, yeah. I'm going Courtney um, for the women. I think she's going to she's gonna win. Um, last year, second was Caitlin. Third was Lucy. I wouldn't be surprised if Lucy finished second. Um, she's young. It was her first year there last year. It could go either way with any of these runners, obviously. But I, it wouldn't surprise me. Camille, I know she's, I don't know if she's 100% healthy. I think that's part of the problem with her. Um, and she races a lot like races and she goes hard every time. So I'm not, I hate to do it, but I don't know if I'll put her in my top three. Um, she can absolutely win. Right. But health issues with her have been a problem. Obviously that bad wreck that just not necessarily injured, but just mental side of things, interrupt training schedule, training blocks. I think Claire Gallagher, she's back after a few years off. Um, she's kind of the same way. She can crush it, right? She can just have that day and come through. But let me, let me put my, my money out here. Um, Courtney one, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Lucy two. And I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to give some love. We're going to go with either, gosh, I'm going to go, I should have had this before, but there's just too many choices. I meant to bash him. Man, she could, she could knock this one out of the park. Um, I'd love to see Casey do well. She's awesome. But I'm going to step out on a little bit of a limb, not a huge one. Um, Francesca Canepa um, from Italy, I think, is going to go three. Okay, but there's also Beth Pascal from the U.K. Yeah, Wayne, she's solid. But yep, that'll be my top three for the women. My men's side. Here we go. Here we go on the men's. Um, someone asked me, is the course record going to fall? My answer to that is no. Last year. All right, so here we go. We hit returning. Jim Walmsley, Mark Hammond, Ian Sherman, Jeff Browning, Kyle Pateri, Charlie Ware, Paul Gibbon, and Chris Brown. Okay, they were in the top 10 last year. Um, Chris finished 10th. At 17:20, and obviously Wamsley won in 14:30. So that's like a three-hour difference between first and tenth, which is a huge gap with this caliber of athlete in this race, right? I think that's just the way that, that Jim ran that race, you know, because realistically it was Mark Hammond. Um, he finished third in 16:08, so he was still an hour and a half ish behind first. So my men's side. <clears throat> I'm worried about Jim, right? And I'm going to say this just because I love I, I love what he's doing, but I think this whole Hoka, you know, Carbon X project that they did, which first of all, Hoka, I don't know if I, I talked about it, you, your marketing geniuses, that worked out pretty well. Um, I, I wonder if that interfered with the way he wanted to train or, or could it have helped his training? And Jim's a wild card, man. He got his win, he got his course record, and he knew that was weighing on him. So there's two thoughts for me here. One is if it's if he has a bad day, it's not going well. In his mind, does he kind of almost clock out a little bit, right? I've done it. It's not my day. You know, where sometimes, if you, you know, like maybe in the last year mindset is, screw it, I'm, I'm doing it this year, right? But now where he's won it, it's like, I've already done it. I'm not having a great day. So there's two mind thought, and I don't know Jim's mind, right? And I think we all go through that. That one, to me, is going to be the wild card in his race. Just his thought process of finally getting the monkey off his back as opposed to, I need to get this monkey off my back. Is he wanted as bad, right? I mean, he set the course record. I don't think it's going to fall. If it does fall, it would be him, And I, but I just don't think it's going to fall this year. Um, it was a hot day, so it could change. And I'm not Nostradamus, but... Um, yeah, Mark Hammond, I know he's, um, had some stuff going this year. He's raced a lot, um, already this year. He just finished a hundred miler in May in Maine. Um, and we've had Mark on the show, so we kind of know his mindset. I don't know if he's going to finish top three. 
Ian Sharman and Jeff Browning to me are still kind of wild cards just because they're, 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 they're veterans, right? And they're wily. So it's hard to bet against father. You can't outrun father time, but what Jeff and Ian have been able to do consistently, that's a whole different level. Um, Let's talk about, so those were, those were the tops from last year, but now who do we have coming, right? Those were just the returning from last year. Now we've got Ryan Sands, heard of him. He's not bad. Jared Hazen, heard of him. He can, he can be quick. Um, and I always get this name wrong from, uh, well, we got Chris Mako, David Laney, um, Tom Evans. I mean, these are just some other names. Um, and there's some, some, you know, Eric Sensman, uh, Patrick Regan, um, and who am I missing here? Um, and I always get the name wrong, Grinius, right, from Lithuania. So I think the men's side is going to be, again, it's going to be boiled down to who runs their race, right? Jimmy Elam, uh, Elam from Utah, I had him. He got a golden ticket, but he's not running now. Uh, Yassine, um, I think he's going to have a good day. He's just a cool guy, and he does a podcast, so, hey, got to give it to the podcast. He's the only runner I know doing a podcast in the race. We're going to root for him. On the men's side, though, it's kind of the same thing, I think. Got some newcomers um, to the course um, from Europe. Um, some fast Americans that probably get out on the course a little bit more. Um, a lot of it, I think, is just how you, if you're coming in healthy. You know, you see that a lot at the last minute scratches. Um, but I think the men's side is going to be more about who runs smarter. Not to say that's not on the women's side, but I think on the men's side, it's a deeper, faster field. The women's is probably one of the fastest or deepest it's been. But I think on the men's side, you're, you're easily there. And uh, besides Wamsley, you know, everybody's going to kind of do that. You know, if Jim's in the race, it's his. I think after Wamsley, I don't think it's as cut and dry for a second or third or fourth or top five. Because there's always those runners that you always like a Jared Hazen but might have, you know, a bad day. You know, um, Ryan Sands. I mean, he's... Won it in what two years ago, so he's returning. He didn't place uh, last, you know, last year. Uh, but again, same thing with him. Um, he he doesn't really drop from races either. So this is more of a discussion than a prediction, I think. But uh, on the men's side, let's let's give it to Jim. I think he's earned that. He's earned that, right? I think so. I'm gonna go Jim one, and again, it's got to be his day. But I think he's earned that, just like Courtney has. I think Jim's earned it on this course, everything he's done. So I'll go there. Um, I think Ian, I think Jeff Browning's going to go top five. I really do. I think I think he's been training, been seeing some of that on social media with some heat, different things. He's got that beautiful Utah air right now. So I think Jeff Browning is going to be top five. I don't know if he'll go above like two or three, but it would not surprise me. Ian Sharman. He's been in the top 10 nine times. I'm going to put him in the top 10. He's obviously earned to be there, but I don't know. He, he Last year he had a really rough year health-wise, so I don't know how ready he is. Mark Hammond, again, he's been racing a lot. Not to say that's a bad thing, but sometimes you see that um, not coming in 100% fresh. I'm going to, I think Ryan Sands is going to push Walmsley a little bit. Um, he finished in 16-19 two years ago. Um, which, you know, still almost two hours behind what Wamsley did. But if you've got that front four or five people running hard out of the gate, again, it's going to be management, right? Who can mentally manage their race and not get caught up in staying in the lead? Because we've seen that with some of the faster men, um, runners. Uh, Jared Hazen, to me, can, could be a wild card. Um, younger. I think he he can easily pull it out. And then you got some to me. I don't. I'm not as familiar, and I'll be honest with some of the um, Europeans. Right? Um, uh, it's a different beast at Western. Right? It's more of a downhill course. Um, the heat is there. There's sections that. I mean, it's not even just heat over the mileage. There's just certain sections, you know, that are just furnaces. So it's not like like. The whole race will be hot, which it will, but there are certain sections that I think can de- like a five mile stretch can derail your whole race, you know, through the canyons. But yeah, let's go Wamsley. Let's go Sands. 
top three there, and let's throw one more in there, and let's go. Let's no, I'm not going to do it. Let's stay with. I'm going to almost go with uh, Kyle Pateri. That might be a little, little um, stretch, I guess, but I like that. I like kind of throwing a little wild in there. And the same thing goes on the men's side. There's going to be somebody that we're not thinking about, we're not talking about, um, that's going to come out and go, everybody's going to say, holy crap. And then people are going to say, oh, yeah, we knew he would do well because of this or this or this. So either way, we're just here for commentary pre-gaming but either way it's going to be an awesome race and my absolute hats off to every single person towing the line no matter where you're at um i'm really really excited how to see how this unfolds and good luck to everybody you know from from first to dfl right um just being there has got to be a great experience for everybody and i want to wish everybody luck and we'll we'll be back next week to to uh recap the race in the way that only trail manners can do kind of iffy kind of iffy all right let's just uh bust it out we got one more thing to cover and then we're done we're signing off so i can get moving on with this life of mine the woody footies the woody footies and there's been some good ones this week was probably one of the lowest weeks um for entries and i don't know if that's because the podcast has been well, gone. Um, but there's been some good ones. We've got from Frozen Head State Park, beautiful in Alberta, Canada, from Steve James, um, Pete Faulkner, um, Black Mountains in the UK, baby. I love the well, love wells. Um, so from Gabe, Gabe uh, Joy's race, the Sinks Canyon race. Um, where's a couple other ones here? Uh, Amy Butler, Nebraska Valley, Vermont. That just seems weird saying Nebraska and Vermont in the same sentence, but it's how it works. Um, Henry Howard with his uh, finish at Sinks Canyon was a good one. I like Mark Davis's. A lot of runners on the peak. A lot of Wasatch Mountain Wranglers, probably 12 or so, just off the cuff, jumping at the same time. Well-timed photo. Dog forgot to jump. Christopher Pack had a good one. Um, I almost coughed right there, so I apologize. Uh, Christopher Fell in Germany, hiking. He's got a trouble with an inflamed knee. Christopher, get well soon, my man. Um, but hiking, don't overdo it. Andrew Giles, Edmonton, Alberta, high point of the city. Um, Alex Terrell, Twisted Fork course. That's this weekend. Twisted Fork in Park City by our good friend Candice Hart. Ran that last year. Good race, tough race, deceiving race. Good race nonetheless. Um, beautiful photos. But this week is a sentimental favorite. An absolute charmer goes to Paige Farnham. Our feet took us to get married. Come on. How can that not win, right? It's got a picture of them. It's got a picture of her in a dress with her running shoes, the dog. It's a, And it's a beautiful shot anyway, but uh, I'm, I'm just so happy for him. So that's the winner. Paige Farnham, congratulations. You will be featured on the single track session picture podcast woody footy winner way to go thank you so much for everybody that posts those on facebook i do check those out even though i've been um a wall from social media a little bit probably more than usual for me um but yeah can't thank everybody enough those that are still sticking around wondering if trail manners is still around it is um and saying that there's a lot more trail running podcasts out there I saw a couple more just barely launched so i'm kind of blown away by that but Good job, right? I can't. Everybody's got their own gig, own style. I say go for it. As long as everybody stays in their own respective um, realms of how they do things, and you know, not trying to piggyback and different things, go for it, man. I think it's good for the sport. I think it's good for people to have options. That way, if one person's not right for you, maybe somebody else will. But I absolutely want to thank everybody for the support. I've been getting emails about it. I've been getting all kinds of stuff about it. And yes, I love you so thank you so much again for sticking around for having some uh, faith in everything going on we'll be back have a wonderful weekend july is almost here we are less than six months away from christmas and i think that's all i got so everybody have a great weekend thank you so much for listening to the podcast share it with your friends 
we will get back on track. I promise. Things are good looking up. So until next week, I'm Eric Manning, your host of the Trail Manners Podcast. See you later.